Halo. It's finished? No. No, no, no. We are definitely just getting started. Isn't that right, Chief? Don't mind him. He's, uh, he's not very talkative. It's good to see you, Master Chief. Chief. Would you look at that? It's night now. Doesn't mean it's time for Betty time, though. Get your ass up. It's time for a video, motherfucker. So, let's talk a little bit about some Halo. It's been a minute, and I'd really like to say something about the series because I feel there's actually a need to once again, simply because of everything that's been happening with not even just 343, but Microsoft as of late with how they've sort of, but actually not sort of, but actually just in fact let go of 10,000 employees across not just 343, but also Bethesda. It's mainly in the gaming side of things, which aside from the usual corporate reason of you're simply a cog in the machine, and if we don't need you anymore, then we're just gonna let you go without any real empathetic care as to why, and with how the corporate world has been changing and shifting over the last year or so, with there not being as much of a need for as many employees at companies such as Microsoft and other tech uh, companies within the industry because of how things have started to chill out and go back to normal I would say a lot of it has to do with Starfield maybe not needing as many hands on deck anymore because of where the game is with development at the moment possibly Which that's just the feeling I get and with 343 well That's simply just another day at the office or well uh, if there even is an office at 343 at this point. M maybe they've got a few uh, office chairs lying around somewhere for the one intern who manages the coffee machine and then the three contractors that are still left and actually had their contracts expire a few months ago but were never informed by Microsoft, so they're, they're still there just for free. But at, in the case of 343 up till recently, really, as far as I'm concerned, would you really notice if that were the case? I honestly doubt so. But when it comes to 343, as of now, we no longer have Bonnie Ross lost in the sauce as the CEO who takes on more than she can clearly handle and whoever decided to put her in that position was absolutely incompetent in that decision making. Why would you have a role that's meant for three different fucking people have it be thrown onto one person like that who clearly cannot manage all of this? Goes to show, Microsoft most likely gave 343 a little too much lenience, and we'll just have to see whatever the hell they mean by that very vague, we're still developing multiplayer and epic stories message, because we don't, know, we don't know to what extent they are developing things. I mean, for all we know, the leaks and rumors are true, and they're just going to be publishing, but saying they're developing for now. Developers and publishers lie all the time, and 343 has a very lengthy history of doing just that. So regardless of where we stand, pretty safe to say that it's pretty typical PR jargon to let people know, hey, don't panic just yet. We'll give you the bad news later. Here's something to subside that for the time being. But point being is you no longer got Chris Lee or Bonnie Ross in charge nowadays. It's uh, pure, l let me look it up, I'm forgetting. Why the fuck is Bonnie Ross still showing this to general manager, goddammit? I said fucking CEO. God damn it, Google. This is why I use Microsoft Edge. Yeah, I'm just playing. I still love Chrome. Fuck Edge. Found it. His name's Pierre Hines. And he's responsible. Is the main reason for why MCC went from being such a disaster of a launch to the pretty content-filled package that it is today. And with him being in charge, good results have already showed because before this whole layoff happened, things seemed to be on the up and up for 343. It really seemed like even if Forge was never going to save this game, it was still in a good place with content and things actually moving with some momentum and content coming along with each season and as much as it's uh, still not enough, you know, and as much as it would take years, Perhaps Infinite would get somewhere down the line. Perhaps at some point it would be a substantially content-filled game. But sadly, that's, uh, well, I mean, the red flags were there from the start, hence the title of this video. Granted, in this case, it's not a 343 exclusive issue. It's simply 
a microcosm of the overall corporate machine. So to say that Microsoft making this decision with letting go as many people as they have, how they've gone about it, to call that a mistake would simply be a bigger lie than many statements 343 has given for damage control over the course of the last 10 years. What do you mean Halo 5 has mechanics built in that allow you to aim down the sights of your weapons? It's not aiming down the sights, it's simply zooming in closer to the screen. Now, stop thinking about this logically if you could oh so kindly and fuck off. And although it sounds like I'm about to contradict myself, as much as I stick by what I just said about this being a microcosm of the corporate machine, at the same time, this does also exemplify the many issues that have already existed in 343 up at this point with losing as many valuable members as they have, but in this instance, it's a peak with how bad it is. So bad to a point where, even though they may have not had a proper team before, they at least had something of a studio. Whereas now, they just don't even have a campaign team, period, for one. The way I see it, th all this did really was just put the nail in the coffin in regards to what was the inevitable for this game's story. And let's be real, Joseph Staten was not going to save this game. He was simply there to be a temporary band-aid for what was an already uh, severely injured and fractured uh, pulsing wound, which was already a total fucking mess from the start and was already simply a red flag from the start for the fact that the whole game was made to hold up and last like a Jenga tower, essentially, where it was already so unstable and already in such wobbly legs from the beginning that any time they would place another piece on top of the Jenga tower, it was just destined to crumble at some point. It was inevitable, and this, this is essentially an example of the Jenga tower completely crumbling down and having to be rebuilt from scratch is how I'm looking at it. It really just seemed like they're uh, clearing a house for what they need and don't need, whatever, whatever the hell that means at this point. But hey, the way, way I look at it, this is essentially the grand finale of all the bullshit having to do with 343's existence up to this point. It really began in 2012. Granted, it, it, 2011 with Comet Evolved and taking over Reach, that, that's a part of the 343 lore, but that's more the origin preludes part of things. The real story begins with Halo 4, and then the story completely forgets where it's going from that point onwards. But even with everything that I've set in mind, I do hope for nothing but the best with 343 and what does exist of it. As of now, I do think that the current head of things is going to do the best that he can with what he has at the moment because before this point he seemed to be doing a pretty solid job with MCC and Infinite for a little bit there seemed to be in a pretty stable spot until all this happened and now in a way it's like we're back to square one but so long as he and who is left in the studio excluding the uh, contractors so long as they can pick up the pieces and just go from there, I think that's really what matters most as of now. Whether that means, again, taking on the role of simply publishing the games and overseeing them, or developing them to some extent, we'll see how that plays out in the future. And this is gonna sound crazy, but just hear me out. I do think that in the long term, this is gonna end up having a positive outcome. I do think that in the short term, as bad as things are right now, which in the case of 343 and Halo, that iconic duo, we've been in the short term for a good decade now, but I feel like this is the ultimate send off to that whole era. Because I think to the new head and the significant change that there's been with roles regarding that and looking at how Infinite was up till all this, this will end up being for the best regardless of how much of an evil this is. I do think it is a necessary one and not even just with Halo. I feel this also needs to be said about the developers. I do hope nothing but the best for them finding work elsewhere and for those who do still have their jobs, I hope that they're holding up well and they're keeping studio morale intact as best as they can because no doubt this isn't easy on them neither. And going back to the main topic, I do think that, again, this was a necessary wake-up call simply because it feels like prior to Infinite, Outside of the core Halo community, nobody really seemed to care or acknowledge the flaws of 343 and the decline of Halo all that much. But it does feel like Infinite was third times the charm, not in regards to Halo 
finally being back on top, which we saw temporarily. No, I think it was a wake up call for people realizing something needs to desperately change. And regardless of how real and how accurate those rumors turn out to be with a change of handling of the series with who puts out games and who oversees what, I do think that if that ends up happening, it'll be nothing but the best. Because even if 343 is still handling development in some ways, which let's just say this is what ends up happening with them just publishing, just think of the possibilities of other developers taking on the Halo franchise. And with all the different studios that Microsoft now has between just, not even Bethesda, but along with Activision now too, the possibilities are endless, which the fact that they're acquiring Activision and yet letting go of all these employees, just remember man, at the end of the day, it's a corporation. They're not your friend. Whether it be Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, same shit, different label. But that whole situation aside, in the case of different developers taking on Halo, maybe you could have its software doing a proper uh, campaign of some type with single player. Maybe you could have Treyarch doing a multiplayer. I think that'd be interesting. Uh, how about Obsidian doing a, a Halo RPG? I wouldn't mind some Halo New Vegas. Maybe someone could make an ODST too because that has a lot of highly requested uh, needs and wants from the community with a title like that. And unlike Infinite, a proper development cycle, hopefully, which Microsoft seems to have this issue with their games having development problems and the title turning out not as great as it could, which that's something I worry about a little bit with Activision being under their thumb. But something that works is finished, looks like Halo, feels like Halo, tastes, smells, uh, gets you going like Halo, bricks you up to like Halo. Along with just the standard every thing you expect from Halo, which that's been said a hundred thousand times as of now. We'll see where life goes and in the case of Bethesda as well since they also got hit pretty big as well. I'm really hoping it again it's just the case of Starfield is good. They don't need as much help. They don't need as many hands on deck anymore and it's still coming out this year but that that's going to be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's uh all things considered, it's nice to be talking about Halo again in some way and hoping for some real positive news in the future, but we'll just see what happens from here. So that's going to be it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all next time. But until then, I'm out. Later.